I said I was going to use this result, right? This pair of results that you did. I hope you've gotten somewhere for sine 4 theta and cos 4 theta. If you were, were with sine 4 theta and you're like, but I have cosines flying around yeah. and I can't get rid of them. That's okay, that's okay. The reason why you can't get rid of them is if you've done this expansion right, do you get you, double angles? Uh, you, well, you will get some double angles. Um, you, you can just say, I mean, it's a bit of a, this is what we were looking at before. Um, you can say this. <laughs> Um, but there's nothing profound about that because we already knew that just from double angle formula. It's just double double angle formula. Okay. Um, however, just it's just worth stating that when you do this binomial expansion, because of the the cosines going up at this rate and the sines co sines going sorry other way around, the cosines going down at this rate and the sines going up at this rate, you're always going to get an odd multiple of some sines or cosines in one of the expansions. So you will never get, be able to get rid of all of them because you can only get rid of um, even multiples of them by using the Pythagorean identity, okay? So you should have that result. If you want, let me have a look at it and I will tell you if you're going to like or not. But here's how we're going to use this pair of results that we um, established before, this pair of triple angles. Here's a question. And again, just like I was illustrating more broadly with like, why do we even go into complex numbers? Like, this is just angles, this is just trig. We don't need complex numbers for it. Well, no. But when you, when you use complex numbers, when you open yourself up to that world, you're like, wow, this, the results just kind of bloop, very easily come out of the question. Here is an example where, look at this guy, right? What does this have anything to do with trig? You don't need trig to solve this. But if you open yourself up to using that tool, the answer comes out quite elegantly. So let's give this a go. Firstly, it says, express tan theta, in t sorry, tan three theta in terms of tan theta. Now, knowing these two, what will be your first line? Sine on cos three. Tan three theta is sine three theta on cos three theta. Let's write that down. Okay, now we've seen this kind of thing before, right? Sometimes you've been, um, you've been handed equations um, that you need to solve their quadratics in terms of a trig function, like this, right? Like uh, 3 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 2 equals 0. So you've seen these guys before, right? But you remember as well, sometimes you see ones where the, it's not just in terms of sines or just in terms of cosines. It's in terms of like a mix of sines and cosines. What do you do with those? Do you remember? If I gave you something like this. Um. <coughs> what would you do with something like that? Actually, I don't want that one. I'm going to make it zero. Right? When there's a mix of sine and cosines, you can't simply state it as a quadratic simply in sine or simply in cosine. So you have to do a division, right? Uh, do I need a cos squared over there? I think I might. Anyway, um, I just made that example up. What you would do is you would divide by some ratio of cos, cos or cos squared or cos cubed, in order to turn all of your terms into tens or something related to that. So in this case, you divide everything by cos squared, right? That would turn the first term, once you divide that into cos, divide that by cos squared, you would get three tan squared. When you divide the middle term by cos squared, that cos that's already there will go. You have one on the bottom, which will leave you tan. And then you just get minus one over here. Aha, quadratic in tan, okay? Now here you have almost an identical situation. I have a mix of sines and cosines. I know I want to get everything in terms of tans. So what rabbit are you going to pull out of the hat? What would you like to suggest that I do with this fraction? So over on the right hand side of the board, I divided by cos squared. Why did I choose cos squared? I was looking at the degree, wasn't I? I was looking at the degree, the highest power, the 2 there, right? In order to overcome that, the exact thing you divide by is the corresponding power. Now over here, I have um, cubes flying around, okay? So therefore, that's what I have to get rid of, yes? So for example, up on the numerator, having divided by cos cubed, what does this term turn into? Hmm. Well, well, 
I've got the sine divided by one of the cosines. That'll turn into tan. That's fine. But then there are still two cos squares to divide by, right? So I'll be dividing by cos squared. What's that? That's a reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of cos? It's sec. So I have sec squared there, right? Hmm. Now I'm starting to think, ooh, I haven't looked at my identities for a while. Let's just keep going and see how far we can get. Sine cubed on cos cubed, right? That's just going to be 10 cubed. Okay, what happens on the denominator? Okay, I've just got that number there. And then again, here I've got... Okay, so who remembers their Pythagorean identity for this? There's a Pythagorean identity. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. So, full disclosure, and I've said this before, right? I don't, I don't remember it, but it doesn't matter. Because I remember the easy one, and then you get everything else from there. How do I, I'm going to play exactly the same trick. That's in terms of sines and cosines, right? What do I do in order to get in terms of tans? I divide by cos squared. Right? That's going to turn this into 10 squared. That's going to turn that into 1. And that's going to turn that into... Okay. So now I know I can get rid of these fairly easily. Okay, let's just quickly do it. So on the top, I've already got a tan theta. And this is going to turn into 1 plus 10 squared. On the denominator, I have another sec squared to replace. Um, and now I just have to do some algebra, right? Just got to crunch it a little bit. So let's see here. I've got 3 tan theta hanging out the front. I've got 3 tan cubed minus 4 tan cubed, which is minus 1 tan cubed, right? Yeah, did I do it right? Yeah? No? Yeah? Denominator, tell me what to do. 4 minus 3 is 1. Uh, and then minus 3 tan squared. Ta-da! 10, 3 theta in terms of 10 theta. Okay? Now, you've, you've got that result now. That's kind of cool, by the way. Like, it does bear familiarity and resemblance with the tan 2 theta result, right? Like, it, it's not completely outside the realm of, whoa, that looks crazy, okay? How are we going to use it to solve this polynomial? Okay. 